Okay, I believe we can start. Yeah. Again, thank you, thank you all. Uh, thank you for your audience and uh, good afternoon. Uh, I'm Daniel Passarelli, uh, Managing Director of Latin America for Digital Commerce Division uh, of Worldline. I've been working for Worldline for one year uh, and prior to Worldline, I was Head of Digital Payments at Elo, uh, local brand scheme uh, in Brazil. And before Elo, I used to be uh, Head of Digital Payments at Cielo, uh, the leading local acquirer in Brazil. I also had the opportunity to start a fintech company, uh, an online broker for financial services. Uh, I'm delighted to, to, to be here today uh, to talk about cross-border remittance from Latin America uh, with uh, Luis Didier, uh, an extremely uh, experienced executive. Uh, Didier, can I, can, I, can I ask you to introduce yourself and, and your company? Yeah, sure. Uh, hi, everybody. Thank you for joining. And thank you, Daniel, for the invitation. But, well, I'm Luis Didier. I've been working for the payment industry forever. Uh, I used to work for Itaú, which is the biggest bank in Brazil. Uh, then Cielo, uh, with the biggest acquirer in Brazil. And then uh, I started a business, which is uh, pretty much a bank, a bank license. But what we do is pretty much uh, international payment, digital international payment through API platform with a bank license. Here in Brazil, we're going to talk about it uh, later, but uh, here in Brazil, uh, you need to have a bank license to, to, to make some kind of business and especially cross-border payment. So we are an international payment company with a bank license. So we use the bank license to make all the registration and, and all the regulation uh, here in Brazil to be able to do cross-border payment in and out the country. Thank you, Gigi. Uh, so we know uh, e-commerce is growing uh, in a fast payment pace in, in, in Latin America, and, uh, and many companies are looking forward to have uh, uh, an offer in this region, starting from Brazil. Uh, but we, we also know there are still many questions about the main challenges and, and the best strategy to, to achieve results in, in, in Brazil. And Brazil has shown itself to be a promising market that uh, is, it still has a, a low competition, which makes new players catch, catch the attention of uh, Brazilian consumers. And uh, low competition means there's a great potential for uh, e-commerce entrepreneurs that, that wants to, to enter the region. So, DJ, my question to you, do you believe this is a good moment to, to start uh, uh, an e-commerce operation in, in Brazil? Yeah, well, yes, I do. But uh, I, I would like to talk a little bit about Brazil, which I think is important for everybody to know. Good things and bad things, but at the end of the day, I think it's good things. It's a good market to go over. So when we talk about Brazil, we are 212 million people living here, 12 of economy in the world, but pretty much 170 million internet users, uh, 105 million e-shoppers. So the Brazilians are really uh, connected, but at the same time, we are a continental country uh, with the Amazon forest, uh, with most of our borders, with our neighbors here in South America. So most of our population live by the sea. 95% uh, of our population live by the sea. Uh, so the only way to leave Brazil, well, well, pretty much most of the only way to leave Brazil is by plane, which is expensive. So, 2% of the Brazilians used to travel abroad. But now, 170 million Brazilians have access through internet to the globe, to all the world. So what's make interesting, Mark, is the Brazilians love what's happening all over the globe, but we do not travel abroad. Although 2% uh, of the Brazilians are 4 million people 
traveling. So we say, ah, Brazilians travel a lot, but it's 4 million people. But then we have here 100 million Brazilians able to buy. Another problem that we have is the language. We speak Portuguese. All our neighbors speak Spanish. And only 1% of the Brazilians speak fluent English. So uh, although it's a very big market, we have some challenges. Uh, the first one, I would say, is people do not travel, people do not know uh, abroad, but through internet now, they do. Second is the language. This is a challenge, I would say. But then, at the same time, when we see all the, the, the digital adoption here in Brazil, it's huge. So Facebook, we are the third largest, largest market. WhatsApp. We are the second and WhatsApp, it's in 99% of our mobiles here in Brazil. Everybody who has mobile has WhatsApp and do, do, do connection through them. Uh, Instagram, we are third largest market. YouTube, we are the second largest market and the first one with no English, English uh, language, by far. And now TikTok is growing really fast in Brazil, we are already third largest market with more than 15 million users. So what I would say is Brazil, we are a lot of people, we are far from the world, but we love digital stuff. We love reaching the globe and internet made it, made, made it easy, made it doable. So the Brazilians now are able to reach the globe and to buy and to connect with all everything that's happening uh, all over the globe. Uh, in the pandemic year, our e-commerce grew really, really fast, more than 41%. It used to be fast already. It was 20% a year for the last 10 years. But the last year, it was 41%, a very strong growth. Uh, we now have more than 100 million Brazilians buying online. Uh, and when we talk about cross-border on this uh, e-commerce uh, environment, we grew 76% cross-border transactions through e-commerce. Uh, more than 13 million consumers bought for the first time something from abroad. And uh, now it's 21% of the whole e-commerce volume it's cross-border purchase. And it makes sense. Uh, we have, for example, Brazilians buying from e-commerce uh, abroad products, but also uh, the main, the, the biggest streaming music in Brazil is Spotify. It's a, it's a foreign company selling to Brazilians music streaming. And it's huge here in Brazil. And then the adoption was very, very fast. So uh, we believe it's going to be growing at the same speed for the next years. I think that that's it, Daniel. Yeah, indeed, uh, a continent and country uh, connected and, and, and hungry for global products. And, uh, you know, uh, it's funny, last week I sent uh, 100 BRLs, 100 reais through WhatsApp chat uh, to my brother to pay him for a, a very nice barbecue we had together here in Brazil, and uh, and he was amazed and surprised by the by the by the convenience uh, to receive a money like that. And as as you know, a few weeks ago, WhatsApp uh, launched their peer to peer payment feature uh, in Brazil, uh, allowing their uh, 100 million users to 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 transfer money through WhatsApp chat. It's a, it's a very seamless and democratic solution. And we have seen uh, a different and relevant initiatives such as uh, WhatsApp and, and Pix uh, in Brazil getting traction. Uh, so uh, from, from your perspective, um, DJ, how relevant do you see those uh, APMs, those alternative payment methods and all these uh, payment trends uh, in Brazil? Yeah, as I said, I've been working for payment industry forever. <laughs> as long as I'm, I, I remember working, it's payment industry. And what's happening in Brazil now is huge. 
So we have here in Brazil today only 5% of the Brazilians, I mean, from the 200 million Brazilians, 5% of the Brazilians have international credit card. And, and this makes sense in the past. Only 2% of the Brazilians travel. So it, it wouldn't make sense to have any other uh, payment method to buy in other currency than ours if you're not traveling. But now with internet, e-commerce, and all the connection growing fast as it is it's happening, all other payment methods in Brazil are being used for buying. And the Brazilians, they say, okay, I want to buy. I want to buy. It doesn't matter if it's a Brazilian uh, marketplace or it's an international marketplace, it's an international service. And so we are growing very, very fast on uh, different payment methods. So the local credit card, meaning the Brazilian who has credit card, but they can only purchase in our currency. But these people, they want to buy abroad. So how to make it happen? Second, wallets. As Daniel said, uh, WhatsApp and some other wallets are growing very fast in Brazil. And people want to use their wallets to buy abroad. Uh, boleto, it's a very Brazilian thing. It's kind of bank slip. The, uh, the Brazilians who does not have bank account, they can print a uh, receipt and go in some places in Brazil, some stores in Brazil and pay. And they want to use this to buy products abroad. Pix is a new launch. It's a central bank peer-to-peer -peer product. And it grew very, very, very fast. It's cheap, it's instant, it's instant payment. 24 for seven is the first Brazilian 24 for seven payment method. And uh, now the Brazilians can, new, can use PIX to buy abroad. And this goes directly from their bank account, digital account, wallet, it doesn't matter. Uh, the cleaning is the Brazilian central bank. And this is growing really fast. It, it was launched in November. And now in, uh, in June, we reached 80 million Brazilians using PIX as payment method. Uh, but all of these local credit card, Brazilian wallets, Boleto, or even PIX can be uh, uh, transactional in BRL, in our currency. So for the Brazilians to buy abroad using this payment method, they have to find a way to make payment and effects together to reach the globe. So if you if you were only accepting credit and debit cards issued by the major global schemes, uh, this will not be enough uh, in Brazil, right? And uh, and and offering local payment methods is the the the, the golden ticket to to expanding globally by, by getting access to entire populations and enabling uh, customers to pay for purchase uh, with methods they have access to 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 end. And, and are familiar with. Uh, so with this economic development and connectivity growth, uh, e-commerce entrepreneurs from uh, all over the world are looking to Brazil as a, a, a potential market for growth. However, starting an operation in a country like Brazil can be such a challenge, uh, even even a nightmare. Uh, and uh, and set up a, a local entity dealing uh, with all the market barriers that we all know, such as high cost, uh, have tax implications, and the whole bureaucracy. Uh, just to give you you guys an, a, an idea how complex can can be entered the the Brazilian market, according to doing doing business report uh, that that compares business regulation in 190 economies, Brazil are ranked in the position 109 as on ease of doing business index. So, uh, DJ, my question to you: What are the main uh, market challenge uh, in Brazil? Yeah, it's pretty much payment specific that uh, uh, we have talked about. Uh, FX regulation, which is very old regulation, it belongs to 1965. The central bank is trying to make it better now, but yet is a very old regulation uh, before e-commerce, credit card, uh, international connections, wallets, and whatever. The tax system is complex tax system. 
so start a business in Brazil is not so easy. What I would say to uh, big, big companies in the globe, let's try Brazil, not coming to Brazil, setting a company here. So the best way to do it is it's through cross-border payment. Then you understand Brazil and then maybe in the future say, OK, now that I understand that, I'm going to set a company there. I would say that is the easiest way to know Brazil. It's a huge market again, but uh, not simple to play here locally. Yeah, it is. And, uh, you know, the, the, the word line, our strategy has been to, to to develop solutions that remove the barriers uh, to, to entry uh, for our merchant customers. And uh, many of our merchants don't actually need to be onshore. They, they would like to sell their product or service without the unnecessary overhead of local operations. Uh, but at the same time, they want to offer the localized payment experience that, uh, that customers uh, expect. So, um, and and turning to, to you, Didier, what are the, the key benefits of uh, a cross-border remittance alternative? And uh, do you have any case uh, to, uh, to share with us? Yeah, sure. Uh, I think the benefits are, are, are pretty much in payment industry. But when I'm talking about, uh, if you have only international credit card acceptance for Brazil, it won't work you are not rich the, the traditional credit card the alternative payment methods and we have something here which is installment everybody every brazilian wants to buy installments and uh, the pure international credit card do not allow brazilians to pay in us dollar installments and uh, above it all we have the approval rates of uh, international purchase not made with local payment solution which is very low when we have, when we're talking about uh, money remittance, it's a way to get into Brazil to collect local payment methods and with a higher approval rate. We have two cases which, which are very, very interesting. The P2W is Americanas.com is the biggest marketplace in Brazil. And uh, they wanted to sell international products on their marketplace. What was the easiest way to do that? So they, they, will, they will have all international products saying that's international but it's shown in our currency so they are able to collect local payment methods and then we are going to pay for the uh, international company with selling it's a paying transaction and uh, uh, another case that we are doing now it's very interesting is with TikTok. Uh, they are doing payout so the brazilians that are uh, uh, sending information to their friends or or, or or viewing, they are making money. But the money is the BRL, it's our currency. And they now are able to just uh, draw with a click 24 for seven using PIX plus, plus uh, cross-border transaction to receive the BRL that they are making on TikTok platform. Pretty interesting. Uh... I believe we only have uh, one minute uh, left. Uh, I would like to, to thank you so much for your uh, experience side on the payment landscape, uh, DJ. It's clear that for customers, it's 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 critical to to understand local preference and to seek out potential hacks uh, to, to to provide a localized experience without some of the headache, especially in, in, in regions uh, which are fragmented or complex to enter. Uh, so uh, again, DJ, it was, it was a pleasure to speak with you and uh, hearing your views on this topic. Thank you again uh, for your contribution. Thank you. Thank you, everybody. Uh, as I said, well, I, I'm in love with payment industry. I think uh, at the end of the day, everybody is going is gonna to have to pay somebody. So payments. Uh, it's in the center of everything. And I think Brazil is reaching now a position that uh, go global. So the Brazilians through internet are reaching the globe, the best thing that has uh, abroad. And uh, I think it's a huge market, a great opportunity for the, the world to sell to Brazil. There are some challenges, but I think uh, it's pretty doable. And uh, thank you, Daniel. Thank you, Worldline, for the invitation.
our pleasure and thank you all for for your audience uh it was a pleasure to to be here with you guys uh both me and Didier, we are completely available to talk with you. Uh, you guys have our contact here. Uh, so thank you. Thank you very much for your audience. Bye-bye. Thank you, guys. Thank you.